Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing a rose curve. Specifically, we're going to find the widest width of a petal on a rose curve given by r equals cosine of 2 theta. Remember that the cosine graphs for rose curves will have symmetry with respect to the polar axis. And each one of them will have a petal tip on the polar axis at the angle of 0. We're going to use this petal that has a petal tip on the polar axis to find the widest width of the petal. Remember that all the petals are going to be exactly the same. So we could use any one of them in order to find the widest width. It's most convenient to use this one here because where we have point A, our highest point on our petal, we're going to have a horizontal tangency at that point. So we'll be able to identify point A. In order to get that horizontal tangency, we must first rewrite our polar equation in parametric form. So we're given that r is equal to cosine of 2 theta, and we know that x equals r times cosine theta. So that's going to give us cosine 2 theta times cosine theta. y is equal to r sine theta, which gives us cosine 2 theta times sine theta. When you're looking for a horizontal tangent line, you would set dy d theta equal to 0. If you were lo looking for a vertical tangent line, you would set dx d theta equal to 0. You want to always make sure that dy d theta and dx d theta are not 0 at the same angle measure. If they are, then your dy dx would equal 0 over 0, which would be indeterminate which would mean that we really can't decide whether it's a horizontal or vertical tangent line at that angle measure without further work. For this video, I'm just going to work on finding dy d theta. You can go back later and verify that dx d theta does not have a 0 at that same angle measure. Okay, so looking at y, we have y is equal to cosine 2 theta times sine theta. We want to take the derivative of this, and we have two different tang um, trigonomic functions. So we're going to use the product rule in order to find the derivative. So we're going to let u equal cosine of 2 theta and v equal the sine of theta, then take the derivative of both of those. So our u prime is negative 2 sine 2 theta, and our v prime is cosine theta. Plugging into uv prime plus vu prime, we have dy d theta. It's going to be cosine 2 theta times cosine theta minus 2 sine 2 theta times sine theta. Now remember that we have to set this equal to 0 and solve for theta. So I need to turn everything into the same angle measure. So using the double angle formulas, I'm going to rewrite cosine 2 theta as 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And I'm going to rewrite the sine of 2 theta as 2 sine theta cosine theta. On the left side, I'm going to distribute the cosine, and on the right, I multiplied everything together. Now what you should notice is that almost everything is in terms of cosine. So I'm going to take that sine squared and rewrite it as 1 minus cosine squared. Then I'm going to distribute the negative 4 and the cosine. Now it looks like I can combine like terms. So I end up with 6 cosine cubed theta minus 5 cosine theta. All right, so now we need to set this equal to 0 and factor. So there's a common factor of cosine theta, and we're left with cos 6 cosine squared theta minus 5. So we're going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve for theta. The cosine of theta is equal to 0, where theta is equal to pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. If you take the second factor and isolate cosine of theta, you would get the plus or minus the square root of 5, 6. Since that's not any specific um, exact value for an angle, we're going to leave it as the arc cosine of plus or minus the square root of 5, 6. All right, so we actually have six angles at which this graph has a horizontal tangency. We got two angles at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So when I plugged pi over 2 back into the original equation, 
I got out a negative 1. So that puts us down here on our polar grid. And you can see that you would expect to find a horizontal tangent line at that point. We also have 3 pi over 2, and again, when I plugged it back into the original equation, I got out negative 1. So that puts us up here, and you can see that we have a horizontal tangent line there as well. Now those two angles are not going to help us very much when trying to find the width of a petal. So we're going to have to work with the other one, which is the arc cosine of the square root of 5, 6. And plugging that in, we got a point here at point A. Now, if we had used the um, negative of the square root of 5, 6, we would have gotten this point here on our petal in quadrant 2. Now, you know that when you're working with your calculator, it's only going to give you one answer when you put in your arc cosine. You just have to remember that there are two solutions um, for each one of these. So those are going to give us these other um, points here for those angles. The only one that we really need to be concerned about is point A. So we're just going to use that one in order to find out what the width is of the petal. And that would be the distance from point A to point B. All right, we can't do that with an angle measure. We actually need to have our rectangular coordinates for point A in order to find this distance from the x-axis to point A. So our next job is to change our coordinates to rectangular form. So using the information that we have, we have arc cosine of the um, plus or minus square root of 5, 6, which really means that we have the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I set up a right triangle with the square root of 5 as my adjacent side and the square root of 6 as my hypotenuse side. Then I solved for the opposite side using the Pythagorean theorem and I have b squared. It could have been plus or minus 1, but I'm just using positive numbers right now. So we already had what the cosine of the angle was. Now we need the sine of the angle, which is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I have 1 over the square root of 6. Now finding my r value, we have cosine of 2 theta, which I'm rewriting as cosine squared minus sine squared. And then I'm just going to plug in. So when I square the cosine value, I get 5, 6. And when I square the sine value, I get 1, 6, which reduces to 2 thirds in lowest terms for my radius length. Now, we want to find x and y are rectangular coordinates. So x is r cosine theta, and y is r sine theta. So my r value is 2 thirds, multiplying by the cosine of theta, which is the square root of 5, 6. And then rationalizing and simplifying, I get square root of 30 over 9. Y is our sine theta, so that's going to be the, our value, which is 2 thirds, times our sine value, which is 1 over the square root of 6. And again, rationalizing and simplifying, I get square root of 6 over 9. Now we have our rectangular coordinates for point A, and that's going to help us to find the length of the petal, or the width of the petal. So the y-coordinate is the one that's important because that's going to give us the distance from the x-axis to point A. And then all we have to do is double it to get the distance from point A to B. So the widest width of our petal is going to be 2 square roots of 6 over 9. All right, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.